Welcome back to HTC Korea. It's our final day of week six here, or week one of part two, whichever way you want to put it. Uh, we have our final match. It's a special match, of course, with the MVP sister teams facing off. Yes, I am excited. And MVP Miracle, they were at home. They went home. They had some vacation time. They watched their sister team play back in Eastern Clash. Of course, they did not become the champion. And also, Crazy Moving especially, a, a lot of them were streaming at the same time and saying, I wish I were there. I wish I were there. So after that, they came back to their team house and started practicing super, super hard because Black After, of course, got a little salty. So let's see how it becomes. It was usually a 3-0 victory going to Black. Yeah, it has been many a time. So it's definitely the underdog story for MVP Miracle. Our second match, of course, will be Raven facing off against Tempest. So... Uh, kind of a cool storyline there with H82 moving into the Tempest roster mm -hmm. and uh, you know, getting to see how that new uh, roster pans out. And H82, of course, facing off against his former teammates. Here is our overview as usual. And the same data as always. We always have to show this just in case there's one new person who didn't know about the schedule. And now Everyone you know. is important. Everyone's important. Everyone is important and heroes, family, we are all in this together, you know. As overview states, you guys know, and total prize, of course, that's exactly why they're looking for the top two spots. And from third to eighth, it's the same prize. So you want to go up there. Tempest, they're still in the, in, on the, in the third, the top two. It looks hard. L5, MVP Black still standing very strong on top, but Tempest made some crazy action back in Eastern Class. They defeated MVP Black once in the series. Who knows? They can do it, do it again in the in part two. I think Tempest is trying, trying their best, and they came up with lots of crazy strategy. And I think we're gonna see it tonight. Yeah, I think we will definitely see some depth of strategy tonight from Tempest uh, against Raven. Experimentation is always a possibility mm -hmm. this early on in our second phase, and also. Uh, facing off against a team that's been very unsuccessful so far in HGC Korea means that you have more opportunities to test out a strategy that you're not sure you want to be using against a more important matchup later on. So every point does matter, and Tempest will look for the 3-0, but they might do it in, I think, a little bit of an unusual fashion tonight. We'll see. Uh, only time will tell, of course, and we'll take a look at our standings in just a moment. Don't forget, guys, that cheering is active here at HGC Korea, so you Ooh. can... Go scroll down right below the chat. I don't know where I'm on the uh, right side of the stream, so maybe like round a little bit towards G Clef right down at the bottom <laughs> is that cheer button. You can use that. Here are our standings for the rest of the world. As Fnatic uh, did drop that first map to Dignitas, but did recover last night. A big storyline there. Perhaps the most exciting part of yesterday's HGC. And also to remind you guys, today's last day of 27.0 patch. Next weekend we will be having the Garrosh Balanced .2 patch. So there will be lots of support nerfs and differences there. So today maybe the, the drafting we're going to see today will be similar. But starting from next weekend, it will be totally different. It will yeah. be a new meta coming up. Don't wor don't freak out that Ariel... Uh burn on your screen that you thought you were worried about, that you thought you had a screen burn in with the Ariel in the ban slot. It's actually just being banned because she's so strong, and that will change, no doubt, after uh, the patch comes in next week. So here are the standings I already mentioned, and uh, we're going to take a look at the standings that matter here for this region. MVP Black take, took their win yesterday. They are 8-0. If they defeat their sister team tonight, they will be... 9-0 and oh heading into this one, so very much still the favorites here headed towards BlizzCon. Yeah, the only team with a uh, 8-0 and maybe a 9-0 after tonight, and of course L5, MVP Black, that's in week 9, I believe, or week, maybe the last, very last weekend. That will be a big match coming up. But as you can see, Tempest, they defeated Mighty from the beginning day. They, they climbed up a little bit higher, so they're catching up to L5. And as you can see on the bottom side, RRR still having lots of trouble, and Raven, they will be facing another very strong team, Tempest, tonight. So, yeah. seems very unlikely, but from what we saw yesterday, they showed some promising plays, and I think we can see that a little more as Tempest will try to experiment, and that can be, that can actually become a weakness in the team. So, Raven can try to really shove the hole in there and then try to win a game. I think that uh, if Raven is, it detects, and we don't know for sure, it's just our guess overall that Tempest will do some experimentation tonight. 
uh, if they are able to just draft very standard and play very standard, which is unlikely for Raven, but if they do that, I think that's their best bet. Of course, the sister teams facing off against each other. It's a special night every time we get to have this. This is the only region in the world where sister teams yep. exist because they, these teams are grandfathered in due to their history in HGC. It's no longer actually uh, allowed for sister teams to exist. Oh, I thought we were going straight to the teams. I was sitting back ready to tell the story. <laughs> I was about to drink something. Too. Uh, uh, he means his coffee. That's what he means, guys. Yes, uh, or some fruity drink on the side. <laughs> yeah, he's not got any special drinks for the Raven match coming later. I guarantee you that. <laughs> All yeah, right. Broke so. back there. But um, it's not even a coffee, is it? Either it's a fruity drink. You yeah, gotta. I have a it. soda and a fruity drink. I just got a coffee and a Bacchus. That's all I've got. That's all you need, <laughs> and I think I was, that's enough. I was ready. I was so ready to go into my spiel about these two teams, but I don't want to do it until their faces are on camera. It seems like we're having some delay. Yeah. yeah. Usually we just go straight to the teams, but maybe. Oh, I we didn't have the cheer screen yet today, right? Yeah, that's Usually why I, that I, comes up right after. See, we we did all this in rehearsal. You know what? It's not coming according to rehearsal, G Clef. It's really weird. What is it? What happened? Something is something, crazy. Something's happening. We're not getting any updates in our ears. They right? like showed the standing screen before the cheer screen by accident, and like the whole program is broken. We have to start the show over. <laughs> Let's go back to the no. beginning. Let's go back to that zoom in screen. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Well, well MVP match. <laughs> that's, that's what's coming up, and. There's a Korean meme for MVP Miracle. They're called 10-minute team. <laughs> Before 10 minutes, they are strong. They are, take the lead against L5. They take lead against the MVP Black, against Tempest. But after that 10-minute mark, they... Oh, here we go. All right. So I know this is in Korean. I actually know it's in English now. So... Bits are a virtual good you can buy by clicking on the Nexus icon at the bottom of Twitch chat when you use bit Aw. But anyways, let's take a look at <laughs> MVP Black standing. Still ahead Rip of Team Wolf. Freedom. And we still have Gladman7. He is still the Gladdest up at the top of uh, the leaderboards. And Fnatic is the most famous team in the world, up with Dignitas, two biggest fan teams. This is kind of like a popularity contest, you know, uh, in, a, in a way. That's right. Where's my L5 fans at, though? Defending Eastern Clash Champions, he told you guys to drop the bits. Why aren't you dropping them? <laughs> I dropped some of mine, but I guess it was not enough. Uh, so, anyways, um, if you guys want to cheer, as we were talking about earlier, the cheer uh, icon is just down below the stream, so you can hit that button. And reclaim, or not reclaim, but claim your rewards, your mounts and stuff like that, or sprays, I should say. And uh, the first elemental has already been unlocked. As you can see, we're getting very close to 20,000. And that's when we get the second one, and then the third one uh, will be unlocked if you guys keep cheering, which I know you are. And we're going to have um, the, uh, the rewards, I think, are already actually available. I claim them myself, and uh, so I think you can get them in your Battle.net account now and uh, use them so they're out put them in to good use yes and I don't know what's going on I just want to get ready for the games uh, we're doing some heroes of the talk resident sleeper right now I, guess, uh, I, <laughs> I think the Korean casters may be like super too excited about today because they seemed super hyped about today I don't know why yeah maybe they just keep on talking I it's usually, if something's wrong with the player setup or taking time with the delay, usually we get something in our ears. But today, nothing. Yeah, we're a bit in the dark on this one. So uh, I do want to... Oh, there we go. Oh, yes. All right, let's talk about the history of these two teams. This is a very special day when the MVT teams face off against each other. It's twice a season where we have this happen. We already had it happen earlier in this round, Robin. MVP Black took the series 3-1. This will be the sixth time that MVP Miracle and MVP Black face each other in pro matches, and this will be the first time uh, that Judy is on the roster. So this is going to be an exciting series overall just because of the history between these teams. This is the version of Miracle that we have here with Judy on the tank. Crazy moving a staple since the beginning. Sniper has been here since the beginning, and everyone else has rotated in and out. It's not been a stable roster for Miracle, but they won... Uh, only one series against MVP Black. They are one and four against the Spring Global Champions from 2016. 
and they are 3-13 and 13 in games. Massively the underdogs every time. Their most successful run against MVP Black was back in the Gold Club World Championship in China, where they defeated them in the semis. They ended up losing the finals to Ballistics in that grand finals, but MVP Miracle has done it before, but it feels like now with this new league system, the difference between the two teams is so much wider. It shows so much more, and uh, you know, the joke we always make is it doesn't feel like MVP Miracle anymore. It feels like MVP Sky, the team that was unsuccessful uh, compared to Black back in 2015. So a different roster, this time with Judy. Can they break through? Black has definitely shown some weak points in the past few weeks. That's the big question here. And to be honest, I think most people would predict an 0-3 score for this roster. Yep, that's. I think that's a very solid statement going through. And there's some rumors that Jaehyun may go into a warrior role when Judy cannot play the warrior hero. So there may be a role swap between Jaehyun and Judy. Judy swapping into a support and Jaehyun into a warrior. Seems like that's almost like a trend now in Korea. And lots of the rosters having that warrior support swap. But here comes MVP Black. Kyocha moving into the support. And since that, it's been solid. But still, I think he needs to brush it up. He's not at the level of Berry Day, but he has been really filling the hole pretty all right. But once it gets to the time when you need the 120%, when you need the extra 20%, I don't think he is showing that extra 20%. And that all starts from Rich. His laning, they win lane, win game. We sh we've seen that from yesterday's games. But they also have weaknesses. Yeah, That's and, why. And every time we see uh, teams draft against Black right now, the go-to strategy is to try to target Rich's hero pool, prioritize the melee heroes on your side, even if it doesn't make sense for the draft, to try to weaken Rich. Because if Rich is on an unfamiliar hero, sometimes he can fall down when Kyocha isn't there to support him, as you say, because Kyocha still has not lived up to the legacy that Mary Day left behind for this team. So. When Rich is playing on an odd hero like a Thrall or a Sonya, when this does get forced by the bands and picks, then sometimes Kocha can falter. Will it happen in this series? That I don't know. But if there's any team that knows MVP Black, it's going to be Miracle, the team that lives and practice together with them for so long now. Over a year of time have they existed side by side, and Miracle might be able to find those holes in what looks to be one of Black's, I'd say, it's not a perfect roster. Its weakness is definitely going into support. I wouldn't say it's one of their weakest rosters because while Rich was out of the team and Coach was playing melee, I think that was the weakest form of MVP Black, most would say. But it's still not the core Black. It's not the Black that dominated them over those four series they won. So let's see if MVP Black shows those weaknesses as we head into our first map here. Do you think Miracle could take a game here, G-Clef? What do you think? I think it depends on their strategy. If they are going for a big shot in game number one. I think they, depending on the battleground, if they go something like Braxis or some crazy strats that they have against the MVP Black, I think there's a big chance that they can pull it off. But as they are known as a 10 minute team, can they finish a game off of Black within 10 minutes? Sky That's Temple's one of the good maps to try to do it on though. Sky Temple games have been known to end quickly. I feel like that's changing to be honest though. Uh, we don't see games end as quickly as they did in the past on this map. Teams have figured out how to uh, take advantages when they're behind. Other other ways, when you lose the temples, not just losing the game strip, trying to force the fight there using macro rotations and global heroes. Our StarCraft Battlegrounds are removed uh, as no surprise with two MVP teams in the booths that that is going to be the case. And Sky Temple, we've seen few more Nazebos within the last two days and so far they were Nazebos were not good. No. Uh, because this meta you start to snowball from the beginning usually you do hit 20 later on but usually before that if you have Nazebo on your team you you're snowballed so much onto the other side that the, basically lose the game before 20 so many times so Nazebo's out and Miracle used to use some Nazebos on this map and some other battlegrounds they tend to like the late game but they never win late game, that's the thing. So maybe it's time to switch up their style and try to go for it with the meta with early snowball, try to take the early ganks and early kills. Let's see how they want to approach the draft. It will be first ban going to MVP Black. And that uh, Aureo, like I said, it's not a burden on your screen. It will be changing soon, don't worry. The patch is coming. Mm -hmm. Expecting the Genji ban here. 
for Miracle, considering the skill of reset on the hero has been quite a carry pick for MV Black, even when they don't have the supports they're looking for because they take him first pick. So we'll be removed here. This puts Black in a position where we'll have to see their true colors here because they were given many opportunities yesterday to pick the Genji first. They should know if Miracle's really ready to play Garrosh, they can just Black and just have first pick Garrosh. We've seen that happening many times over lots of other green teams too. So yeah. I think that's an okay setup to have a strong tank. But usually we've seen solo Garrosh was not the best thing oftentimes. So we end up having double tanks in the front. So I think grabbing a Dehaka for rotation, it's a little bit unusual, but for the battleground, I would say that's an okay pick. It's also Rich's hero. And we talked about how Rich has been targeted in these drafts. It's mm -hmm. against the stronger teams. It has been a struggle for Black when that happens. And he's already just going to grab the Dehaka immediately for the strong top lane, the extra pushing power that provides, and the global rotation, which is so important when you have two objectives on opposite sides of the map, as we do here on Sky Temple. Now Miracle's response. There, there is available. Oh well, it's not. It's going to be Team Green over here. Um, I was going to say there is available Tassadar Smork. and Smork indeed. <laughs> Tassadar Vala. Well, they want to take the Garrosh, and they pick the Rhaegar very early, which will now force Black to take Uther in this rotation. Yep, and Garrosh already taken away. Rhaegar. A little bit surprising. There's Uther still available. And the usual, the more, more common pair for Garrosh was Uther, but Regar seems a little bit surprising. Maybe Miracle wants to take the support away so the so Black cannot really get Illidan and try to have their own Divey comp. I think they're trying to take that out from just taking out the support. I think this is a very creative approach that I don't think we've ever seen from Miracle. Yeah, definitely a different style, and of course, Garrosh is available now this week. It's the first game we're seeing of Miracle with the uh, Garrosh available, so we don't know exactly how they're going to try to draft around this. What do you want with the Uther? Just the Grey Mane? Not going to take Uther at all. An odd choice. They will take Grey Mane Tassadar. The Uther Grey Mane is the very common rotation if you have this weird situation where Rhaegar is picked in first rotation for Miracle, because then you have to you have to protect the Greyman with a strong support. Rhaegar is not available to you, so you need the Uther. Now this gives Miracle the chance to ban it, and because Miracle isn't instantly banning it here, I think there's something these two teams know from practicing against each other so often that we don't currently in this draft. I think Miracle may. This is a given thing. It's saying ban Uther, please. But there are other supports, and actually, Kyoto prefers to play Malfurion along with Dastar many times. There's also Stukov available, which and Silence is a very, very effective tool against Garrosh. Well, they banned the Uther regardless. They thought about it quite a bit. Or this instantly banned on the side of MVP Black. And now, they have to wonder, Miracle is, why the why the Arthas ban? What are they running? And obviously, Greymane could be quite strong uh, if there is no Arthas, but Arthas is not required to deal with the Greymane. Arthas is more commonly used to deal with heroes like Illidan. Man, I have an odd ban, the Arthas. What do you think about it? Because Rich is already on the Dahaka. It's not going to be solo tank Dahaka test. That's not what we're going to see. So, oh, this ban's a bit puzzling, but they instantly locked it in. Let's see. Rich may just go in with the dive, even, even without the reg without the regular on their side. They have to ask so second support solo day. Hmm. This is a puzzling one for sure. Banning Arthas. It's a bit odd. Let's see what Miracle wants to run with this. Obviously, Arthas does with his slows. If he can get in a good position, make Garrosh a lot stronger. Valtel will be chosen as the solo laner, and we get to see a Falstad pick coming in here for Miracle. So Sniper, very likely to be fielding the hero in the top lane to split push and also to deal with the pressure that Rich has shown so many times on this map with a Dahaka. Valtel will also uh, win that lane pretty hard, barring uh, massive mistakes on the side of Miracle, so we'll see if Dami can be up to the task. Miracle really pushing their lane power to really stop Rich from doing all whatever he wants to. And I think they're going to go around a little more. Karazim, surprising, maybe they're just going in all in. Little di 
semi-dive, I would say. With green main and kerosene and material sanctification. It feels, it feels like an old, uh, you know, summer draft from 2016. You have the dive. Could be a Wizen Duelist gray main as well. Very small chance, but still something that could be considered with the uh, essentially triple support that gray main now has. Um, uh, the Karazi pick, I think, is Black's error was to uh, choose Tastar over Uther in this draft, and now they have to use the Karazim. It's not unwinnable, but Karazim has an abysmal win rate right now, and it makes their draft so dive heavy. And that's where the Cassia pick comes in. They have the blinds here. And when, remember, what draft has Garrosh been strongest against all tournament long so far? It's been the dive. And sure, Greyman isn't the diviest of heroes. He can go to the cocktail build still, can poke into those finishing kills on the dive, but when Karazim is dashing and materials Aldruins again, those are good targets for Garrosh. The sanctifications are going to have to be very good on the side of MVP Black to make this draft work as we head into Sky Temple. The Dahaka pick is going to gain value if Falstead is not on the money, tracking him down as well. So let's go into game number one here on Sky Temple to see if the sister team Miracle can take this first game. In blue, MVP Miracle, Judy on Garros, Dami on Malthale, Jaehyun on Rhaegar, Crazy Moving on Cassia, and Sniper on Falstad. And in red, MVP Black, Reset on Greymain, Sake on Tastar, Kyocha on Karazim, Rich on Dehaka, and Tust on Tyrion. Okay, this will be Kyocha's first ever televised match of Karazim. That's right. When he became the main support, Karzim was out of the meta. So, Daka goes top, tries to force the fight there. Miracle takes the bait and gets nearly a cannon tower, actually unsuccessful in getting it. Nice at the blind, end of the day. I think. Without the blind, that tower could have went down, actually. Very risky to do against a Garrosh comp, but they baited the fight there at the top lane. Look at what Miracle's, or sorry, what Black has been able to accomplish too with just this move. If they got the cannon tower, it would have been amazing, sure. But even without it, look at the top lane. You have already Rich up there getting that extra soak that is being missed right now by, by uh, Dami up in the top lane. They were able to rotate away from the garage uh, counter rotation there, avoid getting ganked, and take a pretty significant experience lead as a result. I think about one and one third of a wave. Yeah, plus the Ooh, uh, cannon tower will go down very soon here in the yeah. bot lane, and that's, that's going to be a big boost in experience as well. That's exactly what happens for me when I play Garrosh. I throw a minion every time, just <laughs> like that. Judy, it's, it's really tough if you get the target, but sometimes you get you toss a minion because it's closer to you. It would so. have been hard to kill the hero, but regardless, they couldn't really do too much. Nice try, Judy. <laughs> it happens. It's his first game of Garrosh. He's playing against MVP Black. The positioning is good. So now the uh, top lane is going to be dominated by Malthale. Obviously not necessarily in this exact moment where we have the uh, temples activated. Jayan will be chased away here in a wolf form. Did go for Lightning Bond, by the way, on this large map. Bit of a surprising pick, but will help empower Garrosh when he's being chased or when he's going in deep. Same with Malthale, when he does go in with his Tormented Souls post 10. But this is what I was talking about. The hyper-aggressive pressure from Black in the bot lane allows him to directly uh, now punish this mid-key. And it's Tastar versus Falstad in the bot lane. They're going to get this full wall now. The bot pressure caused this to happen. And we're going to see a toss attempt here. Actually, Sniper does fly in. They are looking for the pick. I don't know if they're going to get it, though. Tist has Aldruins. That's going to be the escape. Nice the aggro distribution. Yeah. They took damage and they split it. The damage Karazin came coming in. Healing, of course, helped them. But the focus was a little bit off from Miracle and the path they took, the path the Black took to escape that. That was a nice route. Now look at the top lane. We talked about how it was going to be dominated and Dahaka was going to struggle, but we're going to see now the first swap. 
Valdale is no longer necessary in the top lane. It's going to be Sniper who comes up there because he's going to be the one who wants to rotate down in the second temple phase. This allows Malthel to be more annoying in the mid and bot lanes with his rotations. Black still hasn't gotten that cannon tower, but I think this is about to be the moment where they do finally seal the deal on that to get that extra experience boost to level 7. Even using the Psy Storm here to help finish it off. So they will get that down now. And they do control this lane. The cost of the top lane uh, matchup going poorly for them. And Rich being hyper-aggressive. Sniper calls the bluff, knows that a rotation is certainly coming. The mid fort being so low is the saving grace here for Black, you have to say, because the top lane is always going to be lost with Malthale on the board. And now with the Falstad versus the Dahaka, very similar situation, even worse one, you might be able to argue. But this is a lot of pressure they're getting done. They want the healing fountain, the healing well here, so that when the next phase happens, they will be very much able to uh, out-sustain. They are a lot, Black has a lot more range. So Miracle could not really change the end. Sniper will get a flight, but no, Drag is there and does not get to use the flight. That's the first kill of the of the day here. Four you were talking in. about this yesterday. MVP Black so keen on these solo lane rotation ganks. When Falstad is winning the, la the lane, that means he's on the red side of the map, which means that there's an opportunity for a rotation like this to punish his positioning. All they have to do is get a good hook. We saw three times Terriel rotated towards that and Sniper reacted. But the third time, he did not react quickly enough and gets picked as a result. So Black gets another kill on the board. Temple is active. They don't get the healing fountain they were looking for here, but the gank is going to make this so much easier to deal with. And they're just going to sit here and control it. Envy Miracle has a late clear on the top camp. And so they're just not even anywhere near this. Looks like they might even give the majority of it up without even a contest. And this is pre-10. This is not like Black has a massive talent tier advantage or anything like that. They just rotated better. Seems like they want to go come and contest Falstead. Has to fly in because like, I'm guessing the flight was canceled. So still has off cooldown. And Dehaka also can join now. The camp is on the other side. Dehaka has a pretty good wave clear. So the top teams and hand is reached for Black. There's isolation. Seven sided. Locked in. Okay. Fully going. There's Isolate. Rich is looking for the kill he here. He wants it. I don't think he will get it. And in fact, needs to leave now as Dami is coming up here. But Falstad has been struggling in this top lane because of the rotations. In this case, just because of the heroic advantage. Now Dami finds himself caught. Doesn't have very many escapes. And look at that. Another beautiful hook from Rich. They're looking for the double here. Cocktail on cooldown. So Sniper will get away with his life. The Black is running away with this game very quickly. This is not the pick of Sky Temple that Miracle wanted. This is not the outcome they expected when they went into this draft. They wanted this map. They wanted to do the 10-minute team strat where they get so ahead in the early game, but Black is dominating them now. Dhaka rotating between mid and bot, not missing a single wave while they push this, knowing there's no threat of rotation from Sniper coming down. And experience lead is massive now for Black. Pre-10, Miracle just struggling to keep this fort alive, they succeed, but the trade-off is massive. That fort will be going down anytime soon with the next camp coming in. Yeah. That's how I feel about this too. If you're a Miracle fan, that's probably how you feel. <laughs> the lanes the lanes were okay, but Sniper couldn't really get the fly in and get the kill. He The, the time once when he flew in, could not get the kill. He was losing lane, so he was always pushed, had the pressure, so he couldn't really join the team fight at the bottom. They were losing levels, and by that time, they were losing forts and Black at 10. So, snowballing is going insane for Black and Miracle. Seems like they don't have a good answer here. I, I would just say, actually, just try to maybe ignore some EXP here and try to get some kills, or at least not give up kills to Black right now, like, like this. Huge taunt here, and seven-sided has to be used, but I mean, they didn't even need this the sanctification. The taunt was not That's enough. Nice. It, it, instant isolation when Falstead comes down. The, both the globals come in at the same time, and Rich just gets the way better jump on that one. Again, sanctification used here, so the boss is not going to be, and they won't be able to use that to control the boss, but with the two deaths, no taunt available. Garrosh is just not coming out of the Hollow Storms. I think Miracle's best bet 
is to get a little bit of a lead on the top temple. They're not even gonna get that though, because they don't know where Black is. They can't know for sure Black's on the boss. They took the safer approach to try to get experience in lanes and not even go directly to the temple. So they lose the boss, they lose the temple. And what do they gain? Not a whole lot. In fact, Judy might get picked. Early Ancestral used. And Miracle is in a world of hurt now. Nice blind coming in. They, they're doing soaking so much damage, but the Lightning Ball does not connect anymore. Actually, the damage is so much more for Black. This is a 4v4, and Dehaka is just on the temple. Meanwhile, they're soaking in so much EXP. Okay, reset is very low. This is going to be a potential one fight here for Miracle, as Tist barely gets the Aldruins out. Look at the sneaky move from Kyocha. He gets away, sure, they get the pick onto Tist, but Kyocha somehow sneaks away to the left. We'll have a dash here to the minion wave. Doesn't even need it, wants to stay mounted. Gonna head directly for Rich. They get the entirety of the temple while Bosch pushes down the keep wall. Now, because this has to be dealt with, it's dealt with so late for Miracle, Black will get two full temples. Two entire temples, not a single shot given to Miracle. The keep wall is down, and this game, it feels like, is crumbling to pieces for Miracle. How could they even possibly mount a comeback given the situation? We're gonna see a four-man gank for Rich. They better hope they get at least this. Yeah, this one will be a kill for sure. There's not much help on the other side too, but meanwhile, they got, they got the boss, the entire two temples. They gotta keep it nine minutes. I would say that was a massive, beautiful rotations coming out from Black. And Miracle, they were very indecisive about rotations. Where do we focus? Which kill do we want to go for? Sniper, I'm pretty sure he was calling, do I have to go now? Which, which side? Like, when are we going in? Yeah. Of course, he was having a hard time against Rich at the Haka, but... Their rotation seems very late today, and they usually play a little bit... A little more crisper than they do today. I yeah. don't know what's going on right now. I mean, also, I mean, you shouldn't be having that much trouble against a Dahaka as Falstad in the top lane anyways. The vision control here has been incredible for Black, too. Rich is going to come in here for the attempted gank. Judy does toss away, but is already pulled here. Another great hook. Sanctification used. Unfortunately, isn't going to connect with the rest of his team, but with the early pick onto Garage, no other tanks on the side of Miracle. They are in dire straits. Isolation helps get the pick here onto Rhaegar. And... Let's not forget all the while the catapults are pushing bot. It just feels like Black has such better control of the map because of this top lane is so dominated by Rich. They're always envision dominance. They always have better ideas about where everyone is on the map. When Rich died in the top lane a few moments ago when the four-man gang came in, Enemy Black was like, okay, well, let's just stay on the temple. And in fact, you know what happened when that happened? They sent two off the temple mid to get more soak because they knew saving Rich was impossible and they knew where everybody on the map was for Miracle. Good side storms here for Sake, actually maximizing the damage. They don't stack. Sniper is so, so low. Just wants him. There's the side storm double to get the kill. <laughs> and, you know, when someone cuts down a tree or pushes one over, a dull old deadwood in the forest, you just watch it fall and you, you have your mouth wide open in, in awe as the tree falls. I feel like that's what we're watching right now. The tree is already cut. It's already pushed over, and we're gonna watch it fall. She's already dead, from what, from what I see. I'm, I was thinking why Garrosh was taking so much, so much damage, even if when he has the armor, we're, we're, hold on to that thought as Ami is trying to turn this around, but already he is gone and dead. This is going all the way for Miracle Talent down, three levels down, and this will be a core shot for sure. Gust a little bit too late, could not really save his teammates there. Yep, it wasn't even the Wizen Duelist build or anything like that from Greyman. Just a standard cocktail. The rotational play was better. Rich won this game when he won the top lane against Falstad twice, getting two solo kills there. The gank rotations from Tist were brilliant. MV Black won it off of the first pick to Haka. And respect has to now be given to Rich's to Haka. Here he was criticized for heavily uh, when he rejoined the team back in phase one, or sorry, part one of phase two. But now that he's shown prowess on the hero, is getting solo kills against Falstads, having Tist getting him help, helping get those ganks as well. The game was won by him. Those picks allowed them to have the map opened up. But Falstad was the only global on the side of Miracle, was constantly either dying and having to respawn or having to hearth home because it was losing so hard in the lane. Yeah, so Hide my couldn't really get it out of there. <laughs> well, the Aka won the <laughs> lane so hard and I'm pretty sure they wanted the Falstad to win the win the lane, and Sniper had lots and lots of trouble. They could not really get this rotation started for their own, and it never started. They were always behind. They were trying to catch something, but Black, knowing every move, 
it just never happened in game number one. And I, I, I hope they just forget about game number one and try to just refresh, just go in into game number one, just like game number one never existed. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think that's that's that should be the way. Do. It was their map choice. They didn't have first ban, uh, and they will now uh, if they choose that going into game number two. So I think that's what the focus should be is trying to figure out a way to outdraft instead of trying to use unusual picks to the Falstad. The Cassia for the blinds, the idea was good, but it didn't really speak to the, the large map. Falstad does, but when Falstad was strolling in the soul lane, perhaps they should have even considered putting Dami back up there on the mouth ale, mm -hmm. leaving Falstad to deal with the, the bottom lane. Have Falstad maybe gank the top lane against Rich. I think leaving a mouth ale in the top lane and, and having Falstad roam would have been a much better option for them because then you can have the opportunities to fly in and get those ganks onto Rich instead of just trying to struggle up there. Shouldn't have been the case, right? So when you think about how things should have been in this game, it's like, well, why would they do that? Well, Falstad's really good against Tahaka. He's going to be fine up there. Mm -hmm. But in this case, he certainly was not fine. Yep. So... It's, a, it's easier to look back, right? Hindsight is twenty twenty. So I'm trying to not put my hindsight bias into this one, but, you know, I feel like things could have been a little bit different. And probably some more discussions are being had in the booth right now for MVP Miracle. Yep, and it's just a gaming sense. If you look at the map, if you're, even if you're just playing Hero League, if you think your top lane is losing, if you have some, some time, if you have some wave clear, then you can go up and help your teammates a little bit. It relieves the stress, the pressure off the lane, and that... The hero in the lane, your teammate can do so much better, has so much more time to go against the enemy hero. So that's what was needed for Miracle, and they could not really make that adjustment because Black was pushing so hard. Yeah, so game number...